Hi, so recently I did a video on depression and I get a lot of comments in this channel saying, you know, I want two minute videos. I want these to be edited to be shorter. Why are you taking so long to say this? Why are you discussing solutions based billing or gaining real authority or salesmanship on this channel? I subscribe for tech. And one thing that you should get by now, if you subscribe to this channel, is that, man, I, I love you all, but I don't, I don't care what you subscribe for. I talk about the topics that I want to talk about. And if you want to stick around, great. If you don't want to stick around, X. Anyway, uh, but when I did that video, I was expecting this, this, this horrible outlash of negativity and I didn't subscribe for this. And what I, what I got from that depression video were a lot of people who genuinely found the advice useful, who were really happy that I put it up. So I, I thought that I would continue along that line of doing videos on what came to mind at the time. And yeah, if I, if I think that there's something that may help somebody else out or you know a good point to get across, I'm not going to not upload it just because somebody may have only subscribed to see Lenovo criticisms or Apple criticisms or, or, or tech and soldering videos. So there was a lot of positive in that video. And that video, to just make it really quick, was about the idea of dealing with depression by having a lot of items on your plate. So I tried to liken it to food. If you get a meal and you get potatoes and those potatoes are burned and taste terrible, your nights, it's just going to suck. Your meal is going to suck. It's good because that's the only thing on your plate. Whereas if you get burned potatoes, burned pizza, but the best uh, steamed broccoli you've ever eaten, uh, you know, a carrot cake, um, you know, the, 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 the most fresh yam that you've ever eaten, and just all the foods that you love, it's going to suck that you have to eat the, the nasty, you know, the other nasty food, the nasty potatoes and everything. But ultimately, you can live with eating the nasty potatoes because you have all this other good food on your plate. And I try to liken life to it in the same way. Again, if, you, if your life, if you've based your life on one relationship and it goes sour, your life is going to suck. If you've invested all of your life in a one aspect of your work and that goes sour, you're really gonna feel bad over it because it's the only thing on your plate. So when that one thing is bad, that's all you have and it's really easy to focus on that. So what I said is that you should always focus on having multiple items on your plate. And I was talking about suggesting that to my own mother who had been dealing with depression, anxiety, OCD, and a plethora of other things that I really don't feel like talking about in YouTube videos for a great majority of her life. She, she very much so would blame all the things that were going on on other people in this really negative way. So what I tried to do is I said, listen, this is all you have on your plate right now. What if you did other things? So she liked volunteering. She liked, um, you know, she liked, she liked retail. She liked selling things. She liked, she, there were a lot of different things that she enjoyed. And I thought that if she would take part in these different activities, she would walk, she'd watch the Golden Girls and Honeymooners reruns that she liked. Uh, after going for a walk, she would go volunteer someplace. After doing that, she would go to a job or something that maybe it would be better so that when one of those things made her feel bad for whatever reason, she still had everything else. And one of the things that I noticed is that for the limited periods of time during which she took that advice, she would feel a lot better. And I would also apply it to my own life. So I would try to make sure that one thing in my life was not what I invested everything into. So that if something went bad in one aspect of my life, I wouldn't feel very depressed. And if you want to understand the concept in its entirety, I would suggest you watch that other video. This is going to be a follow-up to that video where I mentioned some of the thoughts and ideas that I didn't get across in the first one because I wasn't thinking about them at the time. But these are tactics that I use for dealing with depression. Now, I like to think of there as being two different types of depression. And I don't want to say this in a condescending way, but I call them real depression and fake depression. Now, the first thing I want to get across before I get anything else across is that if you experience either any type of depression that you should go see a therapist. I realize that there are people out there that cannot afford a therapist or they're just in that stage where they feel depressed, but they don't think they need a therapist or they need a therapist, but they're too stubborn to see a therapist. So, which is why I'm making this video. I'm making this video for the people who don't have a real therapist to tell them these things. But if you are depressed in any way, you should see a therapist if it's affecting your life. The second thing I want to get across here is that when, when I say real or fake depression, when I say fake depression, I don't mean to say that you don't feel depressed, nor am I putting you down for how you feel, nor am I saying that what you're feeling is any less real or you're, that, that you're that any less of a person. You're not any less of a person for feeling any type of depression. These are simply the terms that I use in my own mind to help me overcome depression. And because it helps me to think this way, 
it's, it's why I'm talking about it on the camera. So real depression to me is depression where something has occurred in life that's going to make you feel a certain way. So for example, when my website lost me $30,000 because the people who updated it changed the option from authorize and capture to just authorize so that my website would take people's money but then give it back to them seven days later, that was real depression. That wasn't something in my brain telling me, okay, don't release this chemical or release this chemical, and now Lewis feels sad and unhappy and miserable when there was no reason for it. This was genuinely like, you could be one of the happiest people in the world, and this comes along and occurs, and you get the news that it occurred, and it's just a kick in the balls. It just feels bad. You f I felt depressed when that happened. I went home that day when I figured that out. I wound up recovering 20 of the $30,000, but still. I went home that day, and I just felt, I, that was probably one of the shittiest days I had in my whole life. And it wasn't just about the money. It wasn't just about the money. It was just the fact that that, that that oversight occurred, that feeling of loss and failure was just so profound that it, I, I let it get to me. It depressed me. I couldn't, feel, I couldn't fall asleep that night, the entire night. It fucked me up inside. The person that I was living with noticed how it fucked me up inside. And it wasn't depression where my head is making me feel it. That's something that's genuinely going to get to somebody. Uh, when the first person that I was dating uh, explained to me why it is that they could not be with me and they could not be in a relationship, that was something that was depressing to me. It was where external factors in the world caused me to be depressed. When I realized that family members that I cared about were sick, that's an external factor that made me feel depressed. When one of the businesses that I was running failed and failed miserably and there was nothing I could do when I had to sit there and come to terms with the fact that the three or four years of my life I put into it was a waste. That made me feel depressed. That's an external factor that made me feel depressed. That's what I call real depression. Then there's fake depression. I, I consider something fake depression when it's something that's chemical on the head. So I know that just in some way, shape, or form, I probably have inherited some of the mental instability of the people in my family. Again, on both sides of my family, there have been bipolar people anxiety where it's a legitimate disorder. I've had people in my family who've had strokes and died as a result of just repeated panic attacks over and over and over. And I don't know the entire history behind it, but I had people in my family that have had to be institutionalized. They just had panic attacks again and again and again and again and again until they just finally had a stroke. I've had people in my family who have dealt with extreme OCD and depression on both sides. So I realized that I'm probably partial to feeling depressed at times for chemical reasons rather than just direct reasons. So there are the direct reasons when I do something and life just kicks me in the balls in a manner that I, that, that's just gonna make me feel depressed just because. And then there are times where I'm going to feel depressed just because a stupid little chemical in my head is flowing where it's supposed to or it's not flowing where it's supposed to or however the fuck it works. I'm not a, again, I'm not a chemist, I'm not a, I'm not a doctor, I'm not a medical person, I don't know how that shit works. But whether it's something in the head that just flows and you could have a good life. You could have, you know, you could have, I could have a girlfriend that loves me and cares for me. I could, have a, I could have a business that's going well. I could be accomplishing everything I want to accomplish with my life. I could come home to an apartment that's nice. I could listen to great music. I could come home after seeing a great show. Uh, I could talk to great people and I could come home and I could just feel sad. I could feel legitimately sad and there'll just be no reason for it. Every, I feel like a lot of people have experienced this at some point in their life when, again, they have that good job, they have that family that cares about them, they have that support system in their life, they're accomplishing what they want to accomplish, and they're just sitting there like, man, you know, just nothing means anything anymore. I don't even know why I bother, what's the point? Do these people really care about me? Is this accomplishment really what I want? And you, it's that time when you just feel so bad for no reason. And I call that fake depression because that's not, the, that's not something happening to me. That's not like the time where somebody tried to stab me on the Williamsburg Bridge on my way home and I couldn't fight them or try to take the knife from them because I was carrying my laptop with me. That's why that Lenovo that's sitting, uh, that's sitting up there with the charger cable, I haven't taken that shit out with me for five months because I'm always thinking in the back of my head now, if somebody goes to stab me or threaten me with a knife, I don't want to just dodge because I'm holding a laptop. I want to be able to take that knife and fucking do, you know, Get rid of it. Um, the point is that though those are events that genuinely, genuinely can depress somebody. That's an external factor in the world depressing me. Fake depression is when an internal factor up here says, hey, I know that your life is great. I know that everything's going the way you want. It could be a little better, but for the most part, you got it good. You got your health. You have people who care about you. You have your business. You have your financial stability. You have your Blackberry, the kitten. But for some reason, 
I'm gonna make you feel miserable today for no fucking reason. That's what I call fake depression. That's when your head starts fucking with you. And the way I deal with fake depression is, is in, I try to do it in a logical way. What I try to do is I try to think of one of the best days of my life. So I try to relive the best day of my life in my head. I don't do that to make myself happy. I do that so that I can try to logically defeat the depression. I try to relive the best day of my life in my head. And then I think to myself, if the events of today occurred during the best day of my life, I think about the time that I got my dream date, or I think about the, you know, the day that I realized that my business was going to allow me to support myself. I think about you know, my first trip to Disney World. I think about the day I hit 100,000 subscribers on YouTube, or you know, just these silly, these happy accomplishments. I think about those happy accomplishments. And then I think to myself, if what happened today occurred on that day, would it bring me down? So let's say that my first trip to Disney World, would, be, would somebody trying to stab me bring me down? Yes, that's real depression. Would losing $30,000 bring me down on the day that I got uh, my, you know, a date with somebody that I really cared about? Yes, that would bring me down. But if I'm just thinking to myself, what's the point, who cares? And then I think to myself about the first time I went to Disney World, that's not gonna bring me down. If I'm thinking to myself, I just don't feel good today. I don't know why, I just, you know, life just ain't worth it. If I'm thinking that this like negative thought process and then I transplant that negative thought process to the day I got 100,000 subscribers or the day that I saw Error 53 get erased off of Apple's website months after the videos that Jess and I did or I think about, you know, that first date with that woman that I really cared about. Or I think about the, you know, getting accepted for that internship at Avatar Studios and the day I got hired and the feeling of accomplishment I felt. You know, when I think about those good times, would that feeling affect me on those days? It wouldn't. So what I try to do is I try, I try to place my depression in terms of the best day of my life. Would what's going on that day make me feel bad on the best day of my life? If the answer is no, I know it's something chemical going on my, in my head and I know that my head is trying to fuck with me. Whereas if it's something like, again, somebody trying to stab me or the day that one of my old kittens died or the day that I lost $30,000 because the person who updated my website updated it and chose authorize instead of authorize and capture without telling me they changed the fucking setting. You know, again, like, that would bring me down. Even if I'm in Disney World, losing 30,000 bucks, man, that's a kick in the balls. I'm gonna feel a little depressed about that. But if I'm feeling happy, really happy, though that random stuff is not gonna bring me down. So what I try to do is I try to separate the real depression from the fake depression. I don't know if you've ever seen the movie A Beautiful Mind, but there's this great scene at the end of A Beautiful Mind, spoiler alert, where the guy is, he's schizophrenic or something and he sees people and he hears people and he realizes that he's not going to fix it. At the end of the movie, he just genuinely realizes that there's nothing he can do. He sees the people, he sees them, and he's walking with somebody, and he chooses not to acknowledge the other people. He knows they're there, he knows that they're right in front of him, he sees them clearly, but he simply logically thinks to himself, you're not real, and he chooses not to acknowledge them. So he uses these logical concepts, these logical processes, to try to outthink his own depression. I mean, in his own schizophrenia. And I try to do the same thing when, I feeling, when I'm feeling a bit depressed. So I try to think to myself, is the way I'm feeling right now, like would I feel this way yesterday? If I was feeling amazing the day before, if the same events that were happening today occurred yesterday, would I still feel bad? And then I'll think about the events. I went out to lunch. I uh, went out to a museum, I went to see an old friend and had a good conversation, and then at the end of the day I'm depressed. And I'll think to myself, well there's nothing that, if that same line of events happened yesterday, I would, I would have been happy because yesterday I was happy, so why am I feeling bad today? And it allows me to logically realize that what I'm feeling is fake depression, I'm feeling that bullshit where your brain decides, I'm just going to snap my fingers and start sending the wrong chemical through the wrong way and make you feel like shit. And I'm not saying that that's going to make you magically feel better. I'm not saying that that's going to fix every problem that you have in life. All I'm saying is that it kind of helps to logically, logically realize that your depression is being caused by bullshit in your own head, by bullshit in my own head. I don't say bullshit in an insulting way towards you, the individual, or towards you and your abilities. I say it in an insulting way towards the part of my head 
that's fucking with me, that's trying to make me feel bad for no good reason. Because I believe that that part of my head deserves to be insulted, deserves to have, you know, as Iron Sheik would say, deserves to, you know, have its back broken and beaten and ass fucked and... What is it, Iron Sheik? Iron Sheik says, break your back, fuck your ass, and make you humble. I believe that that part of my head deserves to have its back broken, its ass fucked, and to just be made humble. It's not a part of my head that I respect in any way. And I realize that when I come at it from that logical perspective, rather than just letting it win and letting me feel a certain when I come at it from that logical perspective and I think, hmm, am I feeling depressed? Am I genuinely feeling depressed because of external factors, or is it just in my head? It really, really helps. And... The way that I allow myself to figure out if it's my interpretation of today or what's actually happening today is I simply say, like, what's happening today that's different than what happened when I felt happy? So if I felt happy three days ago, did I have a different life three days ago? Was I dating different people three days ago? Did I have a different father three days ago? Did I have different employees three days ago? Did I have a different income level three days ago? And if there's nothing that's different from when I was really happy three days ago and now, then that helps me to narrow down the fact that my depression is being caused by bullshit in my head. And when I realize that my depression is being caused by bullshit in my head, it's really easier to kind of start quashing it and beating it down and getting it out of my life than it is when I'm building it up. So I'm not sure if this made any sense or if this was helpful, but because, it, because this mindset is very, very helpful to me from keeping a poisonous mindset out of my life, I figured I would share it with you in the hopes that maybe some of you can keep depression out of your life in the same way. I'm not sure if this is gonna make any sense, but I really hope that it does because depression is one of those things that can genuinely ruin your life and keep you from accomplishing anything and keep you from, because it's one of those, like, it's one of those circles where we're like, when you're depressed, you make the people around you depressed, and then they're depressed, and then they make you depressed, and then you make that. It's just, it's, it's just this, this circle jerk of misery that really, that it's really hard to get out of until you can kind of pinpoint it and just, and just, mm, just fucking beat the crap out of it and get rid of it. And I realize that for a lot of people, you are going to need therapy or a psychologist or a psychiatrist and medication to do that. And when I say bullshit, I don't mean like you should just be able to snap out of it. I, I know that you're not going to be able to snap out of it. If I thought you could simply snap out of it, I wouldn't be doing a fucking 17-minute long video after a 25-minute long video on it. A lot of you are going to need therapy to get yourself out of it. But the first step to realizing that, the, the, you know, the first step to actually getting anywhere is realizing that it's a problem. And, and this is a way for me that's helped for me to realize at times when I have had a problem, when I realized that again, like three days ago, if the exact same shit, the exact same shit that happened today was happening three days ago. And for some reason, three days ago, I was happy as a pig and shit. And today I'm miserable. Why is that? Just that, just that narrowing it down, that logic that just, it just helps a lot. And I hope it helps you.